Hey, Meyer Hatchery peeps, it's Amanda Haney coming to you live from my garage slash barn. I am representing Meyer Hatchery tonight. I have an order of chicks that I place that I am picking up at the hatchery tomorrow. I am so lucky that I live only about 15 minutes from the hatchery. It's a blessing and a curse because I have a problem with chicken math. So because I have a problem with chicken math, I have baby chicks that I'm picking up tomorrow. So if you didn't know that, we do offer pickup as an option for baby chicks, as well as broad-breasted poults. Um, I just thought I'd tune in tonight or pop in tonight and just show you what I do to set up my brooder. We get a lot of um, different questions on chicken chat. Uh, how do I set up my brooder? What do I need once I get my baby chicks in the mail? Well, I'm going to kind of show you what I do. And I'll say it again, I don't do things how everybody should do them. I do things that work for me and my homestead, and I'm hoping that you'll learn something that you can apply to your chick brooding skills tonight. So I start off with a trough. Um, this is my new favorite thing to brood chicks in. I have cleaned it with vinegar water solution. Um, if you've previously brooded chicks or if you have something new that you're brooding chicks in, you're going to want to sanitize it because even if your prior chicks that you are brooding weren't showing signs of illness, they can definitely be carriers of illness, which can affect your new little babies that you bring home. So I start with my trough, I sanitize my trough, and then I'm going to use pine shavings. I do not use cedar shavings. Cedar has it in oils in it that can affect the chick's lungs, so it's not a safe bedding to use with your babies. So I am using pine shavings, and I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some of these into my brooder. And I recommend setting up your brooder prior to picking up your babies. Your babies are hatched and shipped on the same day. If you pick up your babies, they're no more than one to two days old, so they still are in need of some warmth. They're going right from that warm and cozy incubator out into the big, wide, cold world. And if you live anywhere like I do in Northeast Ohio, it is downright cold. It is currently 35 degrees here in my garage, so it is not a good temperature for babies. So we're getting our bedding in. If you're just now popping on, I am just kind of going over what I do to set up my chick brooder. I have an order of chicks that I'm picking up from Meyer Hatchery tomorrow. And I just want to make sure that their area is all set. So I'm just going to spread these around. You'll notice that my brooder doesn't have any holes in the sides, so this is considered draft free. Um, especially since we're in an enclosed building, so there's not going to be any drafts, which since your babies are featherless, <laughs> they have that little chick down, they cannot regulate their body temperatures, so you really need to make sure that their environment, at least like for the first week, is about 95 degrees and steady throughout your brooder. Um, so I lay down my pine shavings, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my feeder, which, by the way, Meyer Hatchery is having a chick essentials sale. We've got tons of brooder stuff on sale the whole month of March, so take advantage. I was just there Saturday, and I picked up all these goodies. I've brewed hundreds of chicks, but I could always use more stuff, like this really, really pretty fuchsia, pink, whatever you want to call it. It has a roller bar on top, feeder, so that they cannot perch on top, and um, poo into their food, which is a, a nice and handy little feature. So I'm going to fill my feeder. You're going to want to, if you're picking up chicks, you're going to want to start your chicks off with a chick starter feed. And they will be on that for at least 16 weeks. And then you will switch when they get to about when they want to start laying, depending on which breed you're getting. That's when you'll switch them over to a layer feed. So we got their feeder already. I also picked up a handy um, heat lamp because heat lamps are on sale. Bulbs are on sale, so I stocked up on those. Um, I have, um, I usually hang my heat because that's how I adjust 
the temperature and the brooder. So everybody needs a thermometer. By the way, these are on sale too. Put a thermometer in your brooder because even though you might think it's warm enough by putting your hand under the light, it might not be. So you're always going to want a, temp or a thermometer. And if you have a huge brooder, you can put a couple of them in. So I'm going to stick this in. Like I said, it's a whole 35 degrees in here. I'm going to stick this in my brooder. And then I'm going to drop my light if it'll let me. If it's not going to let me, we'll do it tomorrow. Not if it's going to let me. And you're going to want to start it out pretty low. Okay, I think that's good to start. So let me move this back. So I'm going to hang my light low. And you'll see that my light is to one side of the brooder. This is so that if my babies get a little too warm, they have enough space to move out into the open area where it's not as um, warm. So I've got my thermometer under the light kind of halfway in between. So I kind of have a better idea of what the temperature of my brooder is. So once I turn my light on, it'll start to warm up. And I have enough time between now and tomorrow to adjust my light. So my brooder temperature will be the right, right temp. So you want to start your babies off at 95 degrees the first week. And you want to decrease the, or yeah, decrease your heat in your brooder by five degrees each week after. And once your babies are fully feathered, they can regulate their temperature and they will no longer need the heat lamp. So as you are needing to decrease the heat in your brooder, you can start raising your heat lamp or you can start moving your heat lamp away, however you're using your lamp in your brooder. Another thing that I use, which I didn't grab my waterer, but I will not mix until tomorrow, is a vital pack. When you are ordering with Meyer Hatchery, you have two options at checkout. You have a grow gel option or a vital pack option. This is my personal favorite. I believe it's a whole $4.77, but it's on sale this month, the whole month. Um, this little pack is gonna give you 200 gallon size servings of electrolytes for your babies. You will not use the whole entire pack unless you are ordering hundreds of birds at a time. Um, the first batch. This will last you quite a while. This just gives them a little immune system boost, especially after coming out of that warm little egg into this huge environment with lots of germs. Um, this is highly, highly recommended. So you're going to do one tenth of a teaspoon and mix it in your gallon water and then you're going to change it out each week. So at least offer this the first week or two. Highly recommend it. It's a good investment. And then in the summer when your birds are hot, looking dehydrated, you can also give this to your older birds. So great investment. I also picked up, my babies get treats. They kind of get spoiled. The baby cakes are on sale. So treat your peeps with some baby cakes. They were also, let's see, what else did I see on sale? There was a nipple waterer, a chick nipple waterer, uh, leg bands, which if you're ordering lots of different varieties of breeds, um, you can band which breed is which and it'll help you, which I will mention, we do have our hired to ID breeds leg banded for free. And some of those breeds included are the Blue Americana, Olive Agar. Um, so if you need a list of those, this is a free of charge service. It's on the website, chat us, email us, call us. We'll let you know, we'll send you the link. Um, and we'll get you the list of the free, hard to identify leg band breeds that we now do as a free service. Um, let's see, what else am I forgetting? So I've got my vital pack ready. I'll mix my water tomorrow. My heat lamp set, food is in, thermometers in so that we can make sure my brooder is the perfect temperature, 95 degrees. Ooh, I did want to mention you don't just brood chicks. Some people brood ducklings, goslings, keats, um, poults. Um, there are different types of waterers for different types of poultry. So if I was bringing home keats, for instance, I want to make sure, I wish I had my water with me. I want to make sure that my water, the lip of my fount where the water comes out is going to be, I want it to be thinner because they have a tendency to drown themselves in their waterer. You could either buy a thinner rimmed waterer base 
or we make uh, waters especially for those smaller birds. And another thing you can do is put marbles around or small rocks. That'll help avoid that. So keep that in mind. It's not just about brooding chicks. We brood all kinds of things. I actually have ducks and geese coming this summer. So it's really, really exciting. Um, so just a reminder, we have our chick essential sale going on the whole month of March. Take advantage. If you don't need brooder supplies now, you're probably going to need them later if you're a chick addict like me or poultry addict. So take advantage. You can find all of the sale items listed on our website. Go to the main page, click on the sale banner, and you'll have a whole list of what's on sale and what's, what the prices are. Um, and we'll help you order that. If you need help, chicken chat us on the web page, email us, call us. Our hours are extended now. It is spring is fast approaching. Spring hours for the call center, Monday through Friday. 8 30 to 5 p.m eastern and then saturdays we have people in the call center now from 9 a.m to 12 noon eastern store hours have changed a bit too mondays they're open 8 30 to 7 p.m tuesdays 8 30 to 6 wednesdays 8 30 to 5 and saturdays 8 a.m to noon remember these are all eastern times another fun announcement is we have chicken chat available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern. So even if the call center is closed, somebody on Chicken Chat will be there to answer your questions or to assist you with anything order related. Also, we have Chicken Chat available on Saturday and Sundays from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern. So I hope I get to hear from you guys on Chicken Chat. If you have any questions regarding brooding your chicks, brooding any other types of poultry, please let us know. We'd be happy to do another video or just answer any of your questions that you have. We want to give you the knowledge you need to successfully raise your birds, raise your birds healthy and uh, make sure that they thrive. So thanks again for popping in with me. I'll see you on Chicken Chat on the website and I will see you next live.